All right, fellas, here we are chilling with Larry Megan on a Wednesday night. Very exciting. We have a full house here tonight. I've got, um, of course, Mike Davis coming up in um, a short time, probably about 15 minutes. Jonathan and I are going to cover the uh, X Factor first. Don't worry, Mike's not going anywhere. He's uh, very comfortable in the green room right now. I've got my, um, my associate and good friend, Lee, from uh, Lee Melger from New York, came out here for a couple days and He's helping me with this business project. You might start noticing a few new graphics and everything, but uh, Lee's a big consultant for me, and I'm really glad he came out here, and he's out there uh, keeping Mike company right now and helping me out. And then, of course, I've got Jonathan Goodman here in the studio, and he just had his show, to be perfectly honest, here on Acorn TV. And uh, Jonathan's going to hang around here for a few minutes here, and we're going to go over the X Factor, which we all watch together right here in the green room. But um, I've got a lot to say about that. And, of course, we have Ronnie on the uh, engineering thing. So we've got a full house here tonight. Uh, so it is kind of exciting. And one of the exciting things is we're going to give away a free watch. Um, if we can, uh, you know, pop that graphic up, uh, if you would, please. I want to let everybody know what we're doing with this. This is an Invicta watch that we're going to be giving here. You can see it's a, uh, it's a, a grand diver from Invicta with a mother of pearl dial. We'll let Mike tell you all about it. But it's a beauty. And what you're going to do, now just hold on, hold your horses, guys. Um, you're going to send an email, but not yet. Okay, Here, here's what you have to do to win this watch. There will be a winner tonight, okay? You're going to send an email to contact at acorn.tv. Now, before you can send the email to contact at acorn.tv, you have to know this. In the body of the email, you have to give us your name and phone number. That's all, just your name and phone number. And in the subject line, you're going to have to put the secret word. We're going to give out the secret word a little bit later in the show, just a few minutes when maybe Mike comes out. We'll give out the secret word and we'll start the, uh, we'll start the emails flowing in. But um, don't send them in before that because they're just going to get cleared out and deleted. And also, we made up our, a decision here. It's only one email per viewer. If you send in more than one, they're going to get deleted. So don't try to stuff the email box or anything like that. It's just one email per customer. That's it. It's going to be a fair giveaway if there's only five people that send in or there's 55 people or 105. Whatever it is, there'll be one winner. It's going to be fair and square. But one email per person, you're going to send it to contact at acorn.tv. It's a really nice gift. We'll let Mike tell you all about that. So that's exciting, too. And, of course, Mike's going to talk to us a little bit about, uh, you know, his, he's a poker hobbyist. I know a lot of people want to talk about Invicta watches. I'm okay with that. Uh, we'll talk about that, too. It's Sterling watches, for that matter, whatever. We'll get into any of that. Michael, I think, also wants to talk a little bit about mixed martial arts. Uh, not one of my things, but that's okay. If you like it, that's what we'll talk about. Also, the Classic Film Zone is going to be a real short session. I'm going to show one clip from a great movie on the waterfront and that's with uh, marlon brando and that's going to be later in the show 1954 if you know the movie you probably know the clip i'm going to show but stick around for that all right jonathan uh let's get into this we're going to talk a little bit here about the x factor and uh we watched it together we tonight did. and when you came over i asked you who do you like and who do you think's in the bottom two? And what did you tell me? I told you who was in the bottom two, Marcus Canty and, and Rachel Ray or whatever her name is. Rachel. <laughs> she it's should be Rachel in the bottom Ray. two, you know what I'm saying? It's Rachel Crow. That right? one. You, yeah. I'm, I'm eating Crow now. Rachel Crow. That's yeah. what it is. And I said th that was my two as well because last night Rachel was really awful. Yeah. She was terrible. But the girl is 13 years old and she has huge talent. And once it was Rachel and Marcus in the bottom two, there was literally no way that Rachel could possibly be going home even before they started singing. Yeah. No matter how bad Rachel was going to sing tonight in the Sing Save for Your Life song, there's no way she could go home because this was the third week in a row that Marcus Canty was in the bottom two. He doesn't deserve to be there. He no. should have been sent home last week yep. and they the judges played political football against Simon and they hurt Drew Reinowitz for Marcus for the second week in a row. Mm -hmm. There's no way they could do it again. No, but they did. But they did. Last week it was Paula that stuck the knife in Simon's back and, and hurt Drew. And this week I just, and you know, you said something when we were watching the show it was so correct. You know, when it got down to, it was two votes against one 
and it came to Nicole Scherzinger. If she says send Marcus home, Marcus goes home three votes to one. Obviously, L.A. Reid is going to vote for to keep Marcus, and that's one of the flaws with this show is that the judges have been too much of an interest. But yep. anyway, once it got to Nicole and she started crying, I kind of knew the handwriting it was what was coming. You it's know, inevitable. And you said it right then and there that how phony that crying act was. Well, like you know, she kept looking to Paula, and like she kept covering her face, and I, it was more of a does it look real? Like that was it yeah. wasn't a sincere, genuine, heartfelt. I feel bad about no. having what I'm about to do. It was like okay, I here's my here's my Oscar winning cry scene, and you've you failed miserably, Nicole. You failed. <laughs> you need to go to Newbridge Theater and get some acting lessons there. I've said it. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Um, it was it was obviously fake. It was phony and. So then she said, I can't send him home. I'm going to let it go to a deadlock. And so she actually technically voted to send Rachel home. And that made it two to two. And even then you were saying Marcus is going home because he's going to be the lowest vote getter. And I said, no, I can see it coming. They're going to send Rachel home. And she did have a bad night last night. But in the Save Sing for Your Life song tonight, that was truly one of the top 10 moments of the season for sure. Rachel Crow did once again. Uh, I would rather go blind. Yeah. She did that about five weeks ago, and it this was even better. Yeah, no, it was. It and was the emotion because the emotion she were she was feeling tonight, you know, just circumvented what it was, you know, however many weeks ago it was. Um, and she really, I mean, you could tell she was on the edge of of, of losing her yeah. stuff right there on the air, but she kept it in. And she, I mean, in my in my yeah. opinion, she blew Marcus out of the water. And again, it's all scripted. I told you that weeks ago, though. Well, that's true. You did, and it absolutely is. And for me now, this show is uh, its toast. I will watch it to the end, but it just there's no point in having sing-offs. I've been saying that for three or four weeks mm-hmm. now. Every time they have a sing-off at the end, it comes down. It's absolutely meaningless. Tonight it was extra meaningless because they threw it back to the vote anyway. Yep. Um, it was just it's the show is flawed. The show is seriously flawed. And I'm only you know finishing out the season because we started this here covering on Acorn TV, the X Factor. Uh, so as far as last night goes, you know, Rachel is gone now. We're down to the final four. They're calling that the semifinals. So I'm assuming they're going to send one home next week. No, next week's it, man. No. Next week's it. No, next week is the semifinal. They said next week. They're one week closer. So they, I think next week's it. Next week is the semifinal. All right. So they're going to down to two or what? No, what they'll do, I, well, here, now that I haven't read this, but I'm assuming what they're going to do is send one home. Okay. And then there'll be the final three, and that will be the final show. Oh, okay. Okay. That'll be the final with three. But we'll have to see how that plays out. But in any case, last night to me, the show I thought once again was a disappointment. They had five contestants each sing two songs. Mm-hmm. One was a dance song, which is a horrible category for, for so many singers. It's a very hard category. And they all were not great. I yeah. think Josh might have been the best of the group. I agree with that. But, yeah. you know, the thing about it was all, all four or five of them basically had somewhat medium tempo songs with just a driving house beat underneath it. It's great. That's not a whatever, whatever. You know, and then they get <laughs> to the second round and they to- they were told that the Pepsi challenge, which is where the contestants have been writing in or the viewers have been, you know, emailing in, I guess, mm-hmm. or Skyping in or texting in, you know, what songs they want for the right. uh, contestants to sing. That was supposed to happen last night. And they had been rehearsing those songs for somehow there was a reason there was a glitch. Mm-hmm. And therefore, 24 hours before they went live, they told the singers that... Um, we're not going to do it this week. It'll be next week. And so you're going to have to come up with a different song in less than 24 hours. And of course they were all scrambling and that was their second song that they all sang. And once we got down nine performances in and one performance to go, as far as I'm concerned, the show was really a disappointment. And then the final performance of the show, the 10th performance was Chris Renee. And I think this guy's getting clearer and clearer each week as he's out of drug rehab. I think Mm -hmm. it's about four months now for Chris He's getting a little better and a little better each week. His singing is getting a little more clear. And for me, it was the performance of the night, Jonathan. I agree. I, he finally got to get back to his his own, his songwriting, his performance from his heart. You know, he didn't have to put on, you know, someone else's song, make it his own, which he, which he has done. But I agree with you. He, he did have a sense of clarity last night that he's not had in the previous performances. But I think it's because it was his words, his music, and his heart. Absolutely. Well, with that said, a shortened X Factor segment here tonight on Acorn TV. Let's take a look 
at uh, what we believe and feel was the best performance of the night last night. He's in it to um, compete for the big prize. Chris Renee, check it out. Okay, there it was. Uh, again, to me, the best performance of the night. Uh, Chris Renee is, um, he's a threat. And now he's, he's, he's in, a threat he's to, win to win the win five it. mil, yeah. um, which is kind of nice because they've really wrecked this show and uh, <laughs> he gives me something to cheer for right here. But right so that's it, Jonathan. Until next week, um, Absolutely. you know, we're getting down, I think, two more weeks to go right. on the X Factor. I won't, then that mean I won't even be here for the final. Oh, well. Oh, I'll, you're I'll going phone out in. Of town? I might be able to phone in. We'll we, can, we can arrange we'll a phone. We, do. Yeah, we can do that. But uh, thanks again, Jonathan. Hey, my pleasure. All right. You and guys have fun. Thanks we're for gonna, watching those who were here earlier. We're going to play a little musical chairs now. We're going right. to get Jonathan out of the chair, and Big Mike is going to be coming in next. Uh, and we're going to get into um, a little bit of uh, Big Mike Davis from the Invicta Watch Group. And while Mike is settling into his spot over there, let me repeat what I said at the top of the show. Because I see we've, we've added some new viewers even since the top of the show. It looks like we've got a nice little crowd going out there. Thank you all for your support. But what we're going to be doing here tonight with Big Mike is we're going to be giving away a free watch. And uh, this one's a, a little bit of a joint uh, sponsorship here between me and Mike. And so I want to thank Mike for, uh, you know, help making this happen. We're going to give away a, an Invicta Grand Diver. And as Mike is getting settled in, I'm going to let him tell you about it. But also, let me repeat now, to win the watch, you're, we're going to have a winner tonight on the show. You have to send an email to contact at acorn.tv. Don't send your emails yet because it has to have the secret word in the subject line. And you don't know what the secret word is yet. But I want to really make it clear, only one email per viewer. If you send two, we're going to delete them and you can't win. So if we have, you know, three emails or we have 33 emails or we have 300 emails, you know, we're, one winner will get it, one person, but only one per per viewer okay so here he is big mike davis mike hey. welcome to chilling with larry megan mike thanks buddy good yeah. to be here yeah i'd love to have you here so tell us now mike this uh this free watch um we're going to get into a lot of stuff with you but i want to talk about just for a second the grand diver yeah this is uh i'm gonna assume a lot of the guys have probably already seen this it's a uh, 47 millimeter grand diver all stainless steel um, black bezel, unidirectional, gray. This is not the uh, the platinum mother of pearl. This is a gray mother of pearl with the um, uh, quartz three hand movement inside of it. Divers flip lock safety clamp. God, I feel like I'm back in the I know, studio. Wait, I know. Is it? Fun? Oh, yeah. Let me <laughs> let me turn on my shop NBC voice. Uh, <laughs> no, you um, got your coffee over here. I have. Yes, yeah, okay. I have good. My my beverage. Yes. Okay. Um, but uh, I don't want to get you in a shop NBC mode. No, that's but just okay. All I no. want to know about the watch. I was what, just having flashbacks. I know. What's the size of that watch? 47 millimeters that's overall a good, nice uh, case diameter. I think the, the bracelet's like 24. It's the three-piece. It's a nice watch. We were kind of scrambling, you know. We, we, you and I. Yeah. yeah we, so uh, uh, to find something there. So uh, whoever wins, good luck. Congratulations. It's a nice watch. Yep. All right, uh, that, again, b before tonight is over, we're going to have a winner. We haven't given you the secret word yet. I'll give it to you in just a few minutes, all right? So you're going to hang tough. Now, a uh, lot of things we're going to talk about, a lot of issues on the table. We want to invite callers. You see at the top of the screen right there, uh, you've got the phone number if you want to call in. You can also Skype video us, and we can do a split screen with us uh, with you if you have any questions you want to ask Mike. Um, but, uh, you know, before we get right to the Invicta watches, one of the things that uh, I get all the time, Mike, and I'm sure you do too, is guys write to me. They send me emails, and they want to know, you know, how do you, how did you get your job, Larry? How did you get started? And you know, they, they believe that what I have is a dream job. I know they, you have the dream job. According, and these jobs aren't that easy. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but but every, there there's an hour worth of show just talking about that. I know, I know, but you know, to a lot of guys, you know, that you have the dream job, Mike. Yeah. And the thing is, people want to know, how do they go about getting their dream job? How did you get your dr this dream job, Mike, uh, being for Invicta? Well, as, as, aside from the fact that uh, A.L. Lalo hired me, uh, it, it's really due to Jim Skelton. Um, about three years ago, I guess it was, mm -hmm. um, I was sitting in Atlanta, Georgia, right. playing poker for a living. And... Um, 
a lot of you guys that have watched Shop NBC for a while uh, will understand this. If you're newer, it won't make a lot of sense. But you, for the longest time, if there wasn't a guest, you could tune in and see Jim Skelton, Sean Wilsey, whoever the host was, doing a watch show by themselves. No guest. Now, they tried to have guests, but it didn't always work out that way. Uh, a new group of ownership came in, and they set down the law and said, if you don't have a, a guested show, your shows don't go on the air. Well, Al Lalo, the, the president and CEO uh, of Invicta, uh, he had already planned he was going over to Switzerland for some meetings. Jill Summerstein, the other person, uh, most of you are going to know her, uh, she does a lot of red carpet events, the Emmys, the Grammys, the CMAs, things like that. And, you know, gives out the welcome bags and things like that. She was going to an event. So they were coming into a clearance event, and they didn't have a guest. And they yeah. told Invicta, you don't have a guest. You don't uh, go on the air. Well, I knew Jim. Obviously, we had started Watch Geeks. We were partners. We knew each other. And he said, hey, I know this guy. And on Wednesday, I got a call from him saying, um, shoot me a video. And he was like, don't ask questions. Just shoot a video like you were selling the watch. And I sent it to him. Jim asked you to do that? Jim or? asked me to do that okay. on a Wednesday. And, of course, he didn't tell me anything. So I did it on a Philippe watch. <laughs> okay. Go. Yeah. But you hey. were already had many Invictus. Well, no. I w I've been a huge Invicta fan. But he's like, pick something you know. Pick something you like. He just didn't tell me it was for Invicta. So, anyway, long story short, sent it off to him. Shop NBC looked at it. They were okay. AL was okay. They flew me in. And then from there, they said, well... He didn't suck too bad. And <laughs> well, well no, those first shows. Well, no, I went from shooting the video on Wednesday, emailing the, the video file to uh, catching a flight uh, Thursday, flying into Minneapolis and immediately went into uh, Friday, a three block or a three hour block clearance event okay. with Sean Wilsey. I remember when you were on the air, that, and that clearance thing, I can... Still see those red and white signs. Behind That's uh, <laughs> actually it was uh, the for those that remember Poseidon, the Poseidon line that we did that oh, no yeah. longer exists. Yeah, it was bad timing. Well, it was yeah. It, well, right and it after, was right after the economy went. Yeah, and it was you know yeah. we still have good shows, but yeah, you know, but uh, yeah, three hours. So long story short, that's how I got into it. And then you took it and ran with it mike you took it to great levels um i don't even real think they realized what they got in you because uh you brought all kinds of new fans to the brand you really did your knowledge of the watches and uh i know that shop nbc was extremely pleased with what you were doing in al because they told me we want you to start watching mike davis oh and that's scary <laughs> <laughs> we want you to be more like mike that's very scary yeah so uh you know i know that uh, you exceeded their expectations you've done a fabulous job for them well, listen, I'm getting a word here that uh, we've got Mark from New York on the line. Who does he want to talk to, Ronnie? Me or Mike or both? Both? All right, well, let's read. What, he, we got a Skype video call, huh? All right, let, let's bring Mark in. This is, is it Mark G? It sure is. Hi, gentlemen. Hey, Larry. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Listen, Mark, welcome to the show. Um, I know that there's been a few times that we, you and I have talked on the phone, but we've never met before. We've talked about you know maybe getting together in new york one day for lunch and it never happened you're always flying down to the caribbean aren't you yeah i am first of all it's a pleasure to meet the both of you together i am totally inspired larry you know i have a tremendous liking for your product and mike you've been such a teacher of movements and uh i don't know if you could if you could see it here but i paid the extra shipping and here's the Torbalon and the rose gold. They're just the oh yeah, I can bright. see it. Nice choice. And uh, Larry, not to make you, I have your Torbalon here too. You know, <laughs> just to keep it fair. Yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. That's our um, look like the dynasty. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Larry, I, again, congratulations. I don't want to take a lot of your time, Michael. All I can say is, <clears throat> you make watch your educational. The way you just do it excites me because you it's almost like going to first grade and understanding a complicated movement. By the time you get done, a novice would understand it. And just thank you for your hard work. I know it's not easy. And Larry, thank you also. And it's just a pleasure to be able to meet the two of you. 
Well, great. Uh, listen, uh, do you have a question for Mike specifically? Yeah, Mike, I had recently, I was able to grab both of the uh, looper with the meteorite dials, you know, the two different colors. Yeah, the reserve, the first reserves we did. Right. I noticed online on Shop NBC that they're actually showing as is conditions with the 750, the 7750 movements. Uh, what are your thoughts? Should, uh, are those worth putting into the collection? Or do you foresee them ever coming out with more current, you know, loopers with the same movement? Uh, and that's a topic we may get into later with, with Swatch and the, the, the movement issue because one of the guys on, on Facebook. Um, what you're usually looking at there is samples uh, that were used on the air. And there may be some blemishes. I know some guys that have gotten some absolutely incredible deals. Uh, I'm not much one for personally. I don't sell a lot of my own personal watches. But if you're looking for, if you if you can get a good deal on them, things like that, you can usually flip pretty quickly unless you're really planning, you know, on keeping it and using it to, to fund a uh, uh, another purchase. Um, values, as Larry will tell you, are getting uh, harder and harder to come by. Prices are going up. The economy sucks. The dollar still sucks. Uh, the days of, of, of kind of owning the... Uh, the Swiss watch manufacturers, the movement manufacturers, that is, uh, because of a strong dollar, are kind of gone, at least for a while. And personally, I think for the foreseeable future, uh, at least for the next 18 months to two years. Um, so, you know, from the movement side alone, it's, I hate to use the word investment because I'm, I'm not talking like getting rich. I'm talking like watch guy buying the watch and flipping the watch. So, um, without getting too carried away, I guess, to answer your question. Usually those are pretty good deals. Well, I'm broaching now between, I would say, 212 to 220 watches, and basically they're not for investment purposes. I don't believe anybody should own a watch for investment purposes no. unless, of course, you buy a rare limited edition, and even then there's no guarantee you're going to make on it. Um, well, you go buy a Thomas Pressure Torbion, um you know, for one point one million dollars, that's probably a good investment. But short of that, I agree with you. And you know, just one last question: mm -hmm. um, I heard you talk a few months ago about the SW three hundred movement. What yeah. is the difference between that movement? I because there's really not much info that I was able to find on it. Well, here's a, here's the way that works: the SW two hundred is basically Salita's version of the ETA twenty eight twenty four dash two, which is a great movement. Um, the SW300 is going to be their copy of the ETA uh, 2892, which now that movement by itself, which is an upgraded version of the 2824. Um, and, and boy, here go the emails. The 2824 really, in some ways, doesn't necessarily deserve the accolades that it receives from some watch collectors. The 2892 is the same movement, essentially, but on a higher scale. And it's also what they refer to in the trade as a tractor. So the 2893s and moving upwards from there use the 2892s as the base. So if you remember uh, the Reserve Speedway Ocean Elite that we did, it was an ETA 2892 with the Dubois de Pra uh, chronograph module added to it. Uh, they won't even ship those to, to companies outside of Switzerland. So think of it as a ver very much an upgraded 2824. And if you could see here, I believe this is the watch you're talking about. Uh, that looks like the exact one I have, uh, silver dial with the furnace blue. Yeah. Hey, Mark, while we have you on this solo shot here, I want to ask you a quick question, uh, and, and then we're going to move on. Thank you for okay. uh, participating in the show. But... Um, you know, I think at one time or another, you know, you and I should get together on the phone at least, and we should set you up as a, as a call-in guest because you're working on an amazing project that's been going on for how many years? <clears throat> well, it's really going on 30 years. I took the helm for the past four years, and uh, yes, it, it, it truly is, and it's been, <clears throat> you know, just very gratifying because we don't only just do it for, you know, the historical value, 
uh, what Larry's talking about is I'm in a uh, treasure salvage uh, Mark, industry. Mark, Mark, check. Uh, give me the 30 second version, and then we're out, and then maybe we'll do a show with you. I'd because it's an incredible project, guys. Listen to this. Okay, well we go and we uh, we find a Spanish galleons uh, in the Dominican waters, and uh, we salvage them and bring them up. But we do it not only for the intrinsic value, but also for the cultural aspect. And we bring children uh, who with to get college credits from other countries involved in a project also. So it's a cultural Sweet. learning experience, obviously, uh, with the economic rewards also. So, so it's really inspiring. And I mean, you guys have spent millions of dollars diving down there looking for sunken treasure. Unbelievable. But, um, you know, it's like anything. Even with watches, the way you gentlemen do it, time in, it's time out. You know, you, you believe in something, you work hard at it. I, you know, my theory has always been the classes half full, not half empty, just keep positive. And just to let you go, so you understand, uh, Mike, I'm not, like I said, I don't sell any of my watches. This goes to my children and to my grandchildren. So I could really give, I don't really care if this watch is $1,000 today and 800 tomorrow or 2000 tomorrow. I just buy it. This will be a legacy that might, you know, I can leave to the family. I hear you. And that sounds very cool with the diving. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mark, for participating. Thank you for having me. And it's a wonderful show. And you two are truly gentlemen, and it's an honor. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Really appreciate it. All right. All right, listen, I, we, we got a lot of viewers out there right now, and everybody's wanting to get in on the free watch. So I think it's time that we're going to share the secret word. But before we do, I'm going to let's go to the to the watch graphic, and then we'll give the, I'm gonna, we'll give the secret word. I'm going to even let Mike give it. So the emails are going to start coming in. It's okay. You'll see it. Because I don't know the secret I word. I know you don't, but you're going to know it in just a minute. It's going to be clear for everybody because we got the graphics ready. But here's what you're <laughs> going to do. So get ready. Get ready, folks. We're giving away a free watch, the Invicta Grand Diver. This is a, a combo sponsorship by me and Mike. And um, you're going to send your emails to contact at acorn.tv. Remember now. If you send more than one email, you're going to get disqualified, okay? Because we have uh, the software to detect uh, if there's more than one. So, so Fiddy, <laughs> that means if you hit send twice, I just want to... I'm kidding, buddy. He, Fiddy, you know. Fiddy doesn't need to win this thing. I'm just giving him he's a got hard a, time because he's, he's, he's such think, a good guy. I know he is, and I think Fiddy's got more watches than you, Mike. I don't know. It's close. I don't know. It's close. But listen, here's <laughs> the thing. You're going to send it to contact at acorn.tv, and in the body of the email, you must have your name and phone number. We don't need your address. If you win, we'll get you on the phone, and we'll get your shipping address. But right now, we need your name and phone number in the body of the email. Now, let's go to Mike. And in the subject line, this is the secret word you must put in the subject line for tonight. Let's oh, show it. that's what that is. Go ahead. There it is, Mike. Brendo. That's it. Stella. That's right. Now, Stella, keep it on. It's okay. Stella, of course, is from Streetcar Named Desire. Exactly. Okay. That was 1951. The movie that we're going to feature Marlon Brando in tonight, we're just going to show one clip tonight. Uh, I didn't want to take, you know, 45 minutes on it when I have you in here, Mike. But anyway, we're going to show another famous scene by Brando from um, On the Waterfront, 1954. Uh, but it was the same uh, director, Ilya Kazan. Now, here's the word. Here's the deal. You're going to put Brando, you know, in an email, in this is the secret word in the subject line. It must say Brando. Then in the body of the email, you put your name and phone number, and you're going to send it to contact at acorn.tv. Okay. Now, Good luck. Ronnie, make sure that the mailbox was cleared out before the new ones come in. Okay, good. So, and, you know, I don't know if we're going to show the secret word again. Uh, we might show it one more time before we do the actual, uh, the actual drawing. It's not an actual drawing. I'll, we'll show you how we're going to pick it. But, um, and you're going to participate in that. But you should all be sending in your emails now to contact at acorn.tv. Okay? And, um, you know, it's kind of exciting. We, here at Acorn TV, we've never done a free giveaway before. So uh, that is kind of exciting. All right. Well, listen. Uh, it looks like Ronnie's tied up on the phone. Come on, Ronnie. What is it? You, you don't have like six hands? <laughs> okay. We want to uh, get the Brando off of there. Thank you. Mike, um, you, um, 
you know, poker is definitely one of your uh, hobbies. And oh, I've, yeah. I've known that about you. And um, you, you brought three, three clips, uh, or you told me to take three clips. And we've got those queued up here. What do you want to talk about poker, Mike? Why is it so much fun for you? What, what is it about poker that draws you to it? Well, it's a mental game. Um, there's many, uh, actually, the, the folks that play that really get into it even use the term uh, called leveling. And meaning there's so many different layers to the game that you can think about the game, the way that you can play the game. Uh, and it's an individual sport. You're not necessarily dealing with, um, you know, a running back who does 200 yards rushing and then at the last second a guy drops the ball, loses the game. It's, it's, it's very much an individual sport in what you're doing. Uh, I like the, uh, the mental aspect to it. Uh, there's a, a very strong psychological aspect to the game as well, which is, is really very interesting uh, as well. Um, and it's a great social game as well. Uh, as you'll, you know, if you've played, you'll certainly find that out, whether you're playing you know, in a casino, whether you're playing in a, uh, you know, a, a Friday night game with your buddies. Uh, there's a, a very strong social aspect to the game as well. And one of the, the most played games in the world currently, I mean, just look at the last World Series, uh, even as bad as the economy is, even with the crazy things the U.S. government is doing uh, in regards to uh, – uh, online poker, they just basically almost killed it, but it's making a comeback. Um, uh, it's still extremely popular and a multi-million dollar payout for the World Series of Poker main event this year. What is this picture we're seeing right here? The guy in the hat? Is that Slim Pickens? I mean, what that is, uh, that <laughs> I is, no idea. I, that is Chris Jesus Ferguson. Uh, Jesus is his nickname. Um, he was one of the, actually the, the software architect behind Full Tilt Poker. Um, probably one of the sharpest guys in poker, Ph.D. Uh, from, uh, forget whether it was uh, UC Davis or UCLA. I forget which one, computer science, mathematics. Uh, the guy's just an incredible mind uh, and, and one of the best poker players in the world. Okay. You have a few other pictures here. Let's take a quick look at a few of these things. These are all poker players, I assume. Uh, Annie Duke. Uh, if you don't play poker, you oh, might she remember a, Annie Duke from yeah. being on Celebrity Apprentice a while back, where she was robbed by the Donalds when that... Yeah, he always gets it wrong. What? How bad of words can we use on this? Because I was fixing <laughs> to say something about Joan Rivers that no, would have been very unflattering. No, let's not do that. Maybe a bustle finder. Anyway, um, what, what is this? Uh, that's David Williams. Uh, many of you might remember him. Uh, he came in second place about six years ago to Greg Fossilman Raymer in the uh, the main event and has had quite a... Uh, now, do you participate in these big-time tournaments? I know you play tournaments, but you play in the big ones like the World well, Series? Well, I've, I've played in the World Series. Um, played 2006 for about four years straight. Um, haven't played recently. Actually, I was just there for my birthday back in June and decided to play a lot of poker but skip the World Series. We were in town. And uh, who's this in? The, the uh, Cloney Gowan. Uh, she was Another player. a uh, full tilt poker pro uh, from Dallas, Texas. One of the best women players out there. And what's the best you ever finished? I mean, do you come in pretty close to these things or win these things or what? Um, I played in 2006, the first World Series event that I ever played in. Uh, I came in 176th out of right at 3,000. Now, can you win good money in these tournaments I or paid is it all about prestige? No, I paid for my entire 10-day trip plus gambling, food, alcohol, the entire thing with the winnings. Like a break-even kind of thing, but had a great time. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, hotel room. Well, yeah. the reason I ask if you can win some money, I know we got Sean on the phone. Let's take a quick call. It's an Invicta call. Sean uh, from Alabama wants to speak to Mike. So let's give Mike the... Uh, what up, Sean? How are you, Mike? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm doing great. So uh, I had a couple questions for you tonight. Of course, first, I'm uh, a relatively uh, new fan of Invicta. I've uh, been collecting since... Uh, September. Since then, I've bought, uh, you know, six for myself and one as a gift quite recently. But uh, with the recent uh, releases, specifically the uh, Torbjorn and the Bolt Zeus, I just uh, wanted to get your thoughts with regards to those two. Uh, 
which ones do you think will be most successful uh, for the brand? Well, you know, the, the Torbion is a big deal. Um, and, you know, and it was a flying Torbion, the Seagull TY-800 uh, that was in there, uh, which is a complication within a complication. But I'm going to be honest with you, and, and I don't mean to take away from that watch whatsoever. It's in one of my favorite cases, which is the, the SAS or the, the Subaqua Specialty. Um, I, I actually said this during uh, the, the shows for that Winterfest event that we were just doing at the uh, very secret Area 51 Invicta Marine Pavilion. Uh, but uh, inside joke there. But uh, I think the Bolt, long term, the Zeus, is, it is such a technological achievement and I was so impressed to check out that watch to find out the manufacturing process, not only that it undergoes, but that were invented to produce that watch. And the fact that they could do, and yeah, I know it was a quartz. We got some other ones coming out that are, are, are going to be significantly more expensive with higher end movements. But the technology that goes into that, the build quality on that, um, and I'm a hard guy to, to impress at this point in life. Um, that is a killer watch. I will own multiple. I've got one on the way, and I'm, I've got three more that I'm, I'm uh, just trying to get my hands on. Well, I've got one on the way as well, and I just can't wait till it uh, gets my doorstep. So. Well, let me, let me know what you think of it because, man, I don't, I don't know if you saw that little 22-minute uh, – it was essentially a slideshow uh, that I did uh, just I did. on the case construction of that thing, and it is utterly amazing. Fantastic. Yeah, I did, uh, check that out. So. You, Sean, do you have one more quick one for Mike? Yeah, I did. I also know, uh, Mike, you're a huge MMA fan, so uh, can we get your way in on the Machida Jones fight this weekend? Um. I agree with Joe Rogan. I think Jones is probably the, the future of, uh, of the UFC or, or MMA in general. Uh, the kid is acts incredible. Um, I think he's probably going to win. However, Machida's changed his training. He's brought in some actual professionals and not just using his brothers to train. Plus, I kind of feel an affinity for him. One of the first Japanese styles that I, I learned was Shotokan. That's the base style that his father teaches down in, uh, in Brazil. Um, so I, I think he's got a good chance, but I think Jones will probably win. I have yeah, no I idea what you're talking about, Mike. <laughs> I, you know, one night you texted me, and I was right by... And, and I, you came up to... Right. I was, in yeah. the, I was in the movies, and I was only you know ten, five minutes away from you. So I came by, and we sat there for two hours watching all this MMA stuff, and... You knew every guy. You knew their moves. You knew their strengths. And Larry was like, huh? <laughs> he was like, damn, that looked like that hurt. <laughs> yeah, it was unbelievable. But, uh, Sean, thank you for participating in the show. We really appreciate it. Uh, any, anybody else that wants to participate, you can give us a call at the number right here at the top of the screen up here. and uh, Or you can video Skype us like Mark did. That was kind of fun. That was actually our first yeah. video Skype that we've done. On a split screen like that. Oh, and it worked very well. Well, other, like. other than testing it with a few friends off camera, you know, but we did it live. And that was kind of cool. Um, I see somebody in the chat room said that they got their first, uh, their first, uh, 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 excuse me, Ozzy XL, and they love the colors. That's actually what I'm wearing tonight is my Ozzy XL, my Uptown. I love this thing. Anyway, um, we were talking about the poker, and you brought a couple of interesting uh, <laughs> videos and I think you know it's worth let's take a take well, I a thought you were going to say interesting pictures because I was just seeing well it. you did let's take a look at that picture real quickly <laughs> give it full screen right there who is this more poker players or is that the winnings I don't know what that is that was uh, 2006 with the outside tent there were so many players that you you had to be uh, outside and those were the Milwaukee beer girls who were the major sponsor for the World Series at the uh, the Milwaukee beer tent. So, hey, when you don't have any life, you, uh, you'll take the good-looking girls however you can find them and meet them. That, that's pretty cool, Mike. That's pretty cool. Um, all right, so uh, we've got three videos. I don't know if we're going to take a look at all of them, but I thought, and I, I did watch all three of them, Mike, and I thought that, um, I mean, they're all great, but this one here with, uh, was it Gus Hansen and 
Daniel Negreanu. I mean, that was an interesting hand. Not only it, so it let, was interesting on a lot of different let's, levels. Let's get it up here and, and very painful. Right. This is the video. It's it's about seven minutes here, and I don't really know poker that well. I like playing blackjack. Yeah, I don't think I have the patience for poker. You know, you got to be very patient. We've played blackjack together. Yeah, we have. And anyway, Gus Hansen against Dan Negriano, and I don't even know who these guys are, but this is pretty interesting. And I never really understood televising poker, but watch this hand; it's pretty interesting. Let's check it out. Corey should have called for four thousand. Uh, See what the flop brings. He had position on Barry so and everything. Gus Hansen so opens up with pocket up fives. He raises to twenty one hundred. Negriano with pocket sixes raises to five thousand. Uh, five. Action falls around to Esfandiari with his ace queen. So what you're seeing here is actually an episode of uh, probably the best poker television poker show ever seen. High stakes poker uh, was on the Game Show Network. This was from, I believe, about three years ago. And I just wanted to stop it here. Now, first of all, two things. Number one, understand this is not a tournament where you're playing with, like, play money. This is real money. So when you see these amounts going in, that is actual cash that these guys have sat down with. Now, the other thing for you guys who were poker players, this is Antonio Esfandiari, uh, nicknamed the Magician, because he is actually a very good magician. Uh, makes an excellent play here uh, out of play against two of the best players in the world. One of them, which is an absolutely insane player, which is Gus Hansen. You can barely see his bald head sticking out there. He's got an ace-queen, and as uh, the true definition of a pro in poker is somebody who can lay down a good hand when they know they're in a bad position. This is him, and we can go ahead and fire it back up and watch. Out of position against Gus and Daniel Negrano. That's exactly what Antonio is thinking about. He's out of position against Gus and Daniel, and he's throwing away ace queen. Not going to put in 4,400 more. And Hansen calls the 2,900. Yeah. yeah, probably not. Flop comes nine six five. Wow! Oh, both. Play so as you saw, as they're playing this out, uh, Gus Hansen, pair of fives, pocket fives. Daniel Negreanu, pair of sixes. Um, the flop on this is really kind of interesting because obviously Negranu hits a set, meaning three of a kind. The six came out. Now, the interesting thing is that's about an eight to one against him to be able to do that. Now, he had him what they call dominated in the first place because the sixes really dominate the fives and you have to get really creative with the cards that are coming out. So if you don't understand poker, you get two cards or Texas Hold'em, which is what they're playing. You get two cards. Then there's a round of betting. Then what's called the flop, which is three cards come out. Those are community cards. And uh, then there's now going to be another round of betting. So Negranu, as you can see, and I don't know how clear the video is, uh, Negranu is way ahead and pretty much a, a shoe in. And we'll go ahead and pick it back up. Here's the flop sets. Daniel's got three sixes. Gus has got three fives. Gus is going to lose a lot of money in this hand. Only thing that could save him is maybe... A seven or an eight coming up and slowing down the action on the turn. The ground about eight thousand dollars. Good morning, Dr. Gray. In the middle of this hand, David Gray has showed up and starts to do his dance moves behind Gus. <laughs> this guy is a cartoon guy. Gus is trying to figure out what to do here. He's going to raise. It's the right move. You don't want someone coming in here with a hand like 9 8. He raised the $26,000. $26,000. And Daniel is just going to call. He's going to let a card come off. I like this move by Daniel. Gus is convinced he has the best hand now. Turns another five. Wow. <laughs> Gus has made quads. <laughs> so as you can see, the set of six is just dominating the fives. He had one card in the deck. Now, there were some straight possibilities, 
But the way they do p- poker math, and the, the easiest way to do that, is after the flop comes out is what they call the rule of four and two. You take the number of outs or cards that you need to get a better hand. And on the turn card, which is the fourth one, you take those cards, so in his case, one, and you multiply it times four, and that tells you what percentage you have of that card coming out. He was 4% to hit that card, and he did. Uh, So now everything, obviously, as you can see from the graphics there, uh, are going to give you uh, his percentages. But Negranu, on the other hand, when that five came out to pair the fives, has now given him a full house. Negranu is this guy that we're seeing in the no, picture. No, that's Gus Hansen. That's good. Okay. He's got the four fives. Negranu now has a full house of sixes full of fives, thinking he is absolutely golden. And this is just where it gets absolutely ugly. And remember, these betting amounts you hear, those are dollars, not tournament chips. They're betting cars, the wow. equivalent. On each one, so we'll go ahead and finish Gus it up. Hansen has quads, and Daniel Negrano has sixes full. Unbelievable. This is trouble. Trouble in River City for Daniel Negrano. The previous hand, I had the Queen Nine Deuce. So I won 21 and I was four, so I won 17. The other players seem oblivious to what's going on in this hand. Hansen bets 24,000. Oh my god, I just won 65, yeah. I think Daniel Grano is putting Gus Hansen on a hand like 7-5 or 8-5. He's putting Gus Hansen on three fives right now. And he's thinking about how do I extract the most money from Gus Hansen here? Gus is trying to appear as calm as he can with quads. He's not getting anything up. The ground calls at 24,000. Daniel's slow playing his full house. Daniel thinks he has the best hand. And the river's at eight. Now, I just want to interrupt one more time. This is a beautiful card because Negranu now thinks... Now, you have to understand, Gus Hansen's a crazy poker player. He'll play any two cards. But when you look at all five of those community cards out there, there's a lot of straight possibilities that are going on. And that's what Negranu is praying for at this point, that that last card helped Gus Hansen and that he made it straight because now he's going to be able to bilk more money out of Gus Hansen because very few times does a full house ever lose. I mean, getting quads, meaning four of a kind, is mathematically uh, astronomical, let's say. Uh, as we saw, he was only a 4%. So it got bad. You saw 24,000, like I said, you could have just bought two cars with what they just put into the pot, forgetting what was already there. So let's go ahead and. Um, I think right now they're at right at or just over $100,000 cash. Okay. Both players like that card. Yeah, 100 Both players want the other player to make a straight. And Gus checks his quads. Okay, so then you want 1700 Great play by... Now, that was a beautiful play by Gus. Check meaning he's not betting. He's giving his... The, the turn of betting now goes to Negranu. Why did he do that? He knows with quads... There's no way in hell he's losing this hand. He figures Negranu's got to have a hand, or if he thinks he's beat, the only way he's going to win it is by making a big bet to try and push Gus off, thinking Gus may have missed his hand or he has a more inferior hand. So it, it, But here's the thing. That, this is knowing the other player that you're playing against because if he checks, Negranu can go, okay, I check, and they just turn their cards over. But Gus knows Negranu, figures that he's got to have a hand the way that he's playing. He checks so that Negranu bets, and then Gus Hansen can do what they call coming over the top, and then he's going to raise him on the end. So he's sucking him in, but it ends up backfiring. So he's (laughs) – well, no, he's – he well, it backfires for Negranu. Okay, let's let's check it out. Hey, Gus. You got your lost two. I lost two. I lost two. Very one four. 
Now, if Gus did have 7-5, Gus has made a straight here. The main thing is Daniel feels he has the best hand. And there's no reason he shouldn't feel he has the best hand. He's feeling the right amount to bet is... $65,000. I'm all in. Huh? I'm all in. How much more is it? That shocked Daniel. Wow. Count, count, count his. Wasn't expecting it. The pot now stands at over four hundred thousand dollars. Even without Daniel calling, this stands as the biggest pot in the history of high stakes poker. And if Daniel calls, it'll be almost six hundred thousand. Unbelievable. Daniel knows that Gus is a loose player, but I don't think he thinks he's loose enough to make this kind of bet on a bluff. How much? One sixty-seven. Daniel's got to know that Gus has a hand. What he's trying to figure out is, does it beat his hand? He might have the nuts. You're missing a big pot here, Eli. It's a big pot here. You just raised me 167. It's a big pot. I better have something if I'm going to call, right? Daniel pointing out to Ellie and Doyle that something's going on here. Yeah, you think they'd know. Oh, you can do it better. Is Buddy, this is if, if I'm if I lose this pot, it's a cooler. So can't feel too bad. If I lose this pot, it's a pretty bad cooler. Pocket fives, pocket nines, maybe a pocket eights. Ooh, that'd be sick too. Oh. That would be sick. Well, you're right, Daniel. It's one of the above. <laughs> yeah. What else would Gus Hansen be raising you $165,000 with? And Daniel decides to call. Shows in the five. So you had one out. <laughs> you I'm you. I'm you. I, I wasn't too happy on the flop. But once the turn came, I wasn't too happy. Meanwhile, he rakes in a pot a over five hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. You're looking at a man who just lost almost three hundred thousand dollars cash. Oh. <laughs> 120, 40, 50, 60. <laughs> yeah. 67. All right, let's get it. Out. All right. So, how to lose a house in less than 10 minutes. Wow. You know, um, maybe, <laughs> maybe I ought to start getting into poker, man. Although, that, that's, that's some serious mind games right there. 373,000 and change. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I'd be looking for a razor blade and a bathtub right uh, after that. That's pretty fun. All right, listen, uh, I don't think we'll get to the other two because we've got callers calling yeah, in Yeah, no, here. that's cool. We've got Ken, Ken H. from Florida. He wants to uh, talk to you, Mike. Is he still on the line? Yeah, I'm here. All right, Ken. Hey, Ken. You're on the phone with Mike and Larry. Uh, who do you want to talk to first? I'd like to talk to Mike first. first Let's do Mike, it. What game do you play the most when you play poker? Limit hold'em, no limit hold'em? What's your most favorite? Um, well, when there was still such a thing as online poker, <laughs> uh, I played a lot of the mixed games. Uh, I was a, a hold'em player, both limit and no limit. I prefer no limit, uh, but uh, I quickly uh, fell in love with the mixed games. Uh, so playing horse, which for those that don't know is um, usually played limit or maybe even pot limit, but you play uh, one full round of hold'em, a full round of Omaha high-low, a full round of Raz, um, a full round of uh, Stud, high only, and then Stud, high low. Okay. Um, next question to you is uh, also, is there any new uh, movements coming out? I keep hearing about the deal with Swatch taking over all the automatic movements as Swiss and everything. Um other than Salita, is there any other movements that y'all are looking at out of Europe or of anything for Invicta over the next year or two? Well, the thing is, uh, other than Salita, the, the Swatch Group owns most of the movement manufacturers that are out there. They own Etta, they own Valgrange, they own Unitas, they own La Magna. Um, so except for the folks that are doing in-house stuff or modifying uh, ETA movements, which a lot of companies uh, actually do, and then they call it their own caliber name. Uh, Salita's one of the only games in town right now. 
so it, it's going to be interesting to see the way the whole thing with uh, with the Swatch Group plays out. Yeah, um, but let me say, let me throw something in on that, Mike. You say Salida is one of the only games in town, but that's for Invicta. Invicta's tied up their production probably for the next two years. Nobody else can buy Salidas. Well, I mean, they're coming out. I mean, you know, we had uh, the SW500 <coughs> there for a while. We're supposed to have the uh, the launch of the 300, which is going to be a really big deal because once they've got the 300, very quickly after that, the other models are going to follow, which are essentially going to be, you know, the 2893s and, you know, things like that where the, the 2892 was the tractor or the base movement. That's exactly what the Salida SW300 is going to be. Um, the country to keep an eye on right now, man, is China. Uh, China, and that's what's scaring the hell out of the Swiss right now. Uh, the uh, the Chinese are probably only just a, a handful of years away of, of really being able to, to put a hurt uh, onto the Swiss, uh, especially Seagull. And uh, they learned their lesson during the first and second, what they refer to as the quartz crisis, uh, when they damn near got the entire uh, Swiss movement business wiped out uh, when that happened. So uh, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. Plus, the political machinations that are going on there with the Swiss Federation, with not only the Swatch Group, but LVMH, the Rich, Richemont Group, and Rolex, which those four companies basically control the Swiss Federation. Uh, they control the voting bloc. They control the way the Swiss uh, go. Uh, and that's why, you know, with what they're trying to do, they're looking at wiping out um, probably hundreds of low- to mid-range Swiss brands in one fell swoop. Uh, most folks just don't kind of catch that. And the folks that aren't following the rules in the first place with these changes in percentages, um, it's not going to make any difference. And plus, that's the whole reason they're not concentrating on the important thing. Yeah. Forget the percentage of the watch to become Swiss made. The movement and what qualifies as a Swiss movement, which is not changing, that's where they could make a difference. And that's why they're not changing that. So... Ken, thank you very much for uh, calling in and participating. I hope you got your email in. Did you get your email in? Sure did. And uh, thanks a lot, guys, and I really appreciate the work you all do. Thank thanks, you. So, thanks for participating, Ken. All right, listen, um, we're going to make a little move here in the show. Uh, but before we do, um, I think, Mike, I want to give one more round. I want to give one more chance. I see viewers are kind of popping in and out with us. we still got a good audience out there. Last call now for the free watch. It's the Invicta Grand Diver, 47 millimeters, Mike. Mother Pearl dial, gray mother pearl, gorgeous. Uh, you know I'm a big fan of Invicta, Mike. Um, the value that Invicta gives is just phenomenal. The quality, the design, all of it. And I'm uh, really uh, happy to participate in this giveaway with you, Mike. And um, what you're going to do at home, at home if you want to win this. Now, if you've already sent in an email, don't send another one. Because if we get more than one from somebody... Our software is going to weed it out, and you're not going to get any. You, you, you won't have a chance to win. Only one email per customer. You're going to email to contact at acorn.tv, and you're going to put uh, your name and phone number in the body of the email. And the secret word for tonight dum, dum, dum. is Brando. And so as in Marlon Brando, you're going to put Brando in the subject line of the email if it doesn't have brando in the subject line again that's going to get disqualified as well so that's all you have to do put brando in the subject line your name and phone number in the body of the email send it to contact at acorn tv if you haven't already done so and we're getting close to uh to doing a drawing so um that's the rules that's how we're playing and you know i think this might be a good time Mike, uh, we're going to take some more questions. You told me that you're willing to, to hang out as oh. long as long as the viewers are here. We'll, we'll hang out. But um, we're going to run a very, very uh, short, abbreviated classic film zone tonight. So, uh, And I picked a Marlon Brando spot. And I kind of was thinking, what should I show with Big Mike here? And I thought of guys like Paul Newman and... You know, so, uh, and and because click. we have such a an uncanny, uh, uncanny well, resemblance. Well, I right? thought of like Butch Cassidy, and you know, I thought of you know like yeah. the Sting because of the poker hand in the Sting. Yeah, yeah. I thought of Clint Eastwood. I settled on Brando because he's one of my favorites, and um, you know he's a tough guy too. So let's go to the classic film zone. <laughs> Uh, like
like I said, we're going to make this uh, we're going to make this very short tonight. Usually I show four, five, even six clips, and we take like 30 or 45 minutes or something like that. Tonight it's going to be one clip only. We're not going to go into a long dissertation on this movie. I love this movie. It's on the waterfront, 1954. Um, this was voted as the, it won the Academy Award for Best Picture. It won Best Director, Best Actor, uh, Best Director, Elia Kazan, Best Actor, of course, Marlon Brando. It also won for Best Supporting Actress with Eva Marie Saint, and she was phenomenal in this movie, if you know the movie. Best Art Direction, Best Cinema Photography, and also uh, Best Film Editing. So, and it was nominated for others as well. Uh, the Best Supporting Actor nominated Carl Malden and also Rod Steiger. And Rod Steiger, you're going to see him in the clip that we're going to show tonight, was phenomenal. And um, basically, uh, without going into the whole plot like I normally do, understand it's an important movie in American film history, one of the um, a, a really pivotal film, but it's about redemption, Mike. Have you ever seen it? I uh, believe I have. It's redemption. It's about having a conscience, growing a conscience. Uh, Marlon Brando is phenomenal. Uh, it's also, you know, it, Brando's always good. You know, it's filmed in New York, of course, and um, it's about the union workers that work at the piers on the waterfront and everything, and all the corruption going on with the union and the guys at the top mm -hmm. of the union and everything. And uh, there was, you know, one guy that was, you know, not going along with the the whole program, and so he was a good he was a good friend, maybe even a best friend, but a very close friend of Brando's in this movie. Brando plays a character by the name of Terry Malone. And so they say, listen, we want you to get your friend up to, you know, out where we can talk to him and try and convince him that he's making a mistake. And so Brando thinks he's helping these guys just to, you know, get his friend straightened out because Brando's part of the uh, bad guys, you might say, in the union. And they he leads them up to talk to them up on the roof and they basically kill him. They push him off the roof and, and he they it's like they make it look like an accident. But they kill Brando had no idea they were he was setting him up, his friend up to be killed. And um, Brando grows a conscience, and um, Brando's brother, his older brother, is uh, played by Rod Steiger, and of course he's mixed in with the mob bosses and everything. He's a big part of it. So for him to go against the union is going against his own brother. Uh, but what really complicates the situation and makes this story so interesting, a couple of things, but one is that Brando then starts to develop a love interest with the sister of the friend that got killed. Yeah. And she doesn't know that, you know, Marlon Brando, Terry Malone's actually set up her brother. And she's devastated that her brother, you know, was killed and trying to get to the bottom of it. And they start going for each other. It's a great movie. Go and get it. I'm not going to go into a big thing about it right now because we're going to keep it short because of our guest here, Mike. But I did want to play one clip. And uh, this is a very famous clip. And it's really one of the great movie scenes of the whole entire 20th century. And this is Brando in the back seat of a taxi cab with his brother. And, of course, his brother has been told by the mob bosses, you better straighten out your little brother. You know, if you don't, then you're going to have to answer to us. And we may have to, you know, we may have to take care of your little brother. And so he gets into the cab to try to straighten out his brother. And um, this is that scene with Marlon Brando and Rod Steiger. It's famous. You've probably seen it. If not, you're going to dig it. Let's check it out. Hi, Charlie. I'm glad you stopped by for me. I've been wanting to talk to you. Yeah, sure, kid. Where to? Uh, you just go to River Street, and I'll tell you where to stop. I thought we was going to the garden. Yeah, we are, but uh, I want to cover a bet on the way over. Besides, this will give us a chance to talk. Well, nobody ever stopped you from talking, Charlie. Uh, Listen, I, uh, the, the grapevine says that you got, you got a subpoena. Yeah. I mean, you know, the guys would know you well enough to know that you're not a cheese eater, but they think maybe you should uh, not be on the outside so much, but on the inside, have a few little things working for you down at the docks. A steady job, uh, a couple extra potatoes, that's all I want. Oh, sure, that's great when you're a kid, but uh, you're getting on, you're pushing 30, Sluggy. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Well, I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Maybe. Look. There's a, a boss loader slot. It's open on the new pier we're opening up. 
You see now, it pays six cents on every hundred pounds that goes in and every hundred pounds that goes out, and you don't have to lift a finger. That's two, three, four hundred dollars a week. Four hundred dollars a week, just for the opening. I get all that dough for not doing nothing. You don't do anything, and you don't say anything. You understand? There's more to this than I thought, Charlie. I'm telling you, there's a lot more. You don't mean that you're thinking of testifying against some people that we might know? I don't know, Charlie. I mean, I'm telling you, I don't know, Charlie. That's what I want to talk to you about. Listen, Terry, you know how much those peers are worth that we control through the local? All right, you think that Johnny's going to jeopardize the whole setup for one rubber-lipped ex-tanker who's walking that. on his heels? What the... Better. That's not the point. I could have been a lot better, The Charlie. point is, we don't have much time. I'm telling you, I haven't made up my mind well, yet. Well, make up your mind before we get to 437 River Street. Before we get to where, Charlie? Before we get to where... Listen to me, Terry. Take the job. Just take it. No questions. Take it. Terry, take this job, please. Charlie. Please take it. Charlie. Oh, Charlie. How much you weigh, sir? When you weighed 168 pounds, you were beautiful. You could have been another Billy Khan. That uh, skunk we got you for the manager, he brought you along too fast. It wasn't him, Charlie, it was you. Remember that night in the garden, you came down my dressing room and said, kid, this ain't your night. We're going for the price on Wilson. You remember that? This ain't your night. My night, I could have taken Wilson apart. So what happens? He gets the title shot outdoors in a ballpark, and what do I get? A one-way ticket to Palookaville. You was my brother, Charlie. You should have looked out for me a little bit. You should have taken care of me just a little bit so I wouldn't have to take them dives for the short end money. Well, I had some bets down for you. You saw some money. You don't understand. I could have had class. I could have been a contender. I could have been somebody. Instead of a bum, which is what I am. Let's face it. It was you, Charlie. Okay. Okay. I tell him I couldn't find you. Ten to one, he won't believe me. Here. You take this. You're gonna need it. You, you pull over. Take me to the garden. Well, what happens right there is that that cab driver, he was he was part of the uh, part of the mob. And as soon as he let him out, he knows what happened. He took uh, he took Charlie to the warehouse and um, Charlie got his. He got he got killed once he did to the worms. They, he, they found him on a meat hook. They put him up on oh. a meat on a meat hook. Um, you know, so Charlie got, got, uh, got dead, you know, because he didn't, uh, handle his brother and they had a plant with the tech. could have been a contender. Yeah. Anyway, great scene. I know a lot of you have seen that one before. 
So like I said, the magic word tonight or the secret word tonight is Brando. I think we're going to close it off now. Anything else coming in, Ronnie? Okay. Uh, do we have any callers on the line? All right. I want to get one caller to call in right now. Let's not worry about a video Skype. Just give me a regular call on the studio. We got a nice audience out there. So um, let's go ahead. Give me one person to call in. First one to call in. And uh, we're going to get, I don't know who it is. The phone should be ringing any second. But somebody give us a quick call. You're going to help us determine the winner on this watch. Let's go to the graphic on the free watch if we can. Are you going to let them pick the uh, Well, the you're number? going to see how we're going to do this, Mike. Oh, okay. I want it to be open and transparent and completely fair. But we got to get someone to call. We, we got somebody. Let's see who it is. Here they are. Watch it be fitty. All right. All right now, you know, that's almost, people are going to think it's fixed now. All right. Come on. Put, put fitty on. It is, I said, watch it's, it be, watch it be rigged. Fitty. Okay. No, it's not rigged because he has kidding. no idea. Okay. It's fitty from Boston. Hey, Rick, how the heck are you? Can we, guys, how are you? Okay. Uh, fantastic. Thanks for uh, following the show tonight, Rick. And by the way, that was really nice. Yeah, I saw you did several posts uh, for this show uh, tonight on Facebook and everything. So thanks a lot, Rick. No problem. Bud. Well, you know, it's got it's kind of late for you back there. What is it after midnight, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. Do you have any snow to plow tomorrow morning? No, sir. Yeah, we're kind of dry here too. Well, here's what we're gonna do. Let, we're gonna get a split screen ready. Okay. Um, all right, now, here, let's get them up here. Let's get the split screen. What's the number, Ronnie? 47. So I guess we did have some people that got weeded out because earlier it was a little higher than that. Um, so we did weed some out. So again, I told you only one per customer. So Rick, I know you can't read that. Let's and let's put it full screen and let's go ahead and get a graphic on it, Ronnie. Rick, I want you to give me a number between one and 57 or 47. Excuse me, between one and 47. Um, I got to go 19. That's my birthday. All right. 19. Ronnie, let's count them down. As I do it, I want you to click it each time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Open it up, Ronnie. Drum roll, please. I don't know. I can't see who it is. I have no idea. Ronnie. John Frankhauser. I can't even say it. Finkhauser? Frankhauser. Frankhauser. Yeah. All right. John Frankhauser, you're the winner. Congratulations. I want you to send us an email to contact at acorn.tv and uh, give us your shipping address. We'll call you and confirm it. But, hey, Rick, uh, listen, as long as, I, as long as we got you on the phone, you got anything for Mike or myself? Uh, not really. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, hey, great call we had there. Uh, yeah, no, but thanks for helping Just Fitty. Just kidding, Rick. Th know. Thanks for helping Fitty. Uh, I know John uh, Frankhauser will be very happy. But let me ask you quickly, who are the Patriots playing this weekend? Uh, Washington Redskins in Washington. Oh, gosh. That's, yeah. a, that, that's, that's a, a gimme. That's it? a walkover. All right. Just yeah. call it a game and don't even play it. But, all right, the Jets have um, Kansas City. <laughs> I, I get scared. But uh, I actually yeah. had a guy I played uh, high school ball with that uh, played for the Redskins. And, and I got one more question, Rick, before I let you off the phone. What's no. your What's your feeling on uh, on on Bobby Valentine now coaching the Red Sox, managing? Oh. I love it. I, I love the guy. He's awesome. He'll fit in good here. He's going to straighten out all these bums that like to drink beer and eat chicken during the game. Uh, yeah. That's right. I think he, I think he's going to pull a prank where they come to spring training, and he'll probably bring a couple of buckets of chicken. That's Bobby V for sure. Yeah, he will. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Rick. Thanks for helping us out. All right. Thanks, Rick. All right. Hey, I might didn't say hi to you before. Sorry. No, no worries, man. It's good to hear from you. All right. You too. You guys have a good night. All right. All right. Thanks, man. Peace, Rick. Well, there it is. The free uh, watch. The winner of the watch goes to John. Finkhauser. All right. Did he send an email in yet? He's either on my Facebook page or he's a Watch Geeks. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't have to say. We, we, we can call him. We'll get it. But uh, congratulations. I'd just like to know where he's from. But uh, did you 
recognize that name? Yeah, I, I, I think he's on, either on my Facebook page or he's a Watch Geeks member okay. or both. Well, listen, before we go, you know, to close out the show, let's, uh, we were talking about poker. We talked yeah. just a one caller, Jazz brought up MMA. Uh, we talked a little bit about Invicta. If there's any other callers out there, anybody else that wants to talk to Mike, you know, call on in. This is the free time right here that I slotted right here after we, we did a short presentation on the uh, Classic Film Zone tonight. We gave away the watch. And, uh, and now it's just free time here for a few minutes. If anybody wants to call in and talk to Mike Davis, got any questions for the Invicta thing, or, you know, you want to talk MMA or you want to talk poker, um, you know, this would be the time to do it. Um, you know, Mike, when is the next time that you guys are going to have a, a big, you know, you, you've been going down to Florida now. These events are, seem like every two weeks you guys are doing a remote. <laughs> <laughs> but they're amazing because, I mean, I enjoy watching them. I mean, you guys are well, setting and, all and, kinds of records and, now. And unfortunately, uh, thanks to most of the folks that are listening uh, anyway or watching, I guess I should say, uh, they've been tremendous uh, successes. Uh, I can't say when we're shooting for, uh, but I know... And when I say immediately after our event, uh, just the other day, I'm not kidding. I mean, like within 10 minutes, uh, phone calls were being placed, and we're looking at doing something probably within the next 30 days, an, uh, another event. Another remote? We, yeah. After the first of the year? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, which is fine by me because when you leave 20, 22 degrees and 3 inches of snow, and suddenly you can walk out to the beach wearing shorts and a t-shirt and be very comfortable except for the gale force winds that we had that was kind of funny now last year mike i know you went out to uh to basel are you going to be doing it again this year do you know or um it depends on how the schedule is going to work we're, right. we're we're trying to get back out there again uh it is a lot of fun even though the dollar screwed up right now uh really saying this to to everybody that's watching uh, if you can convince your significant, I mean, especially if you're single, um, you should do it once. Um, get out there, plan at least three days, take your time. It is huge. I'm not kidding. After the first day, it didn't look like I had ankles. That's how swollen. Yeah. You know, my, your, my feet feet get, your feet get hammered up. Um, it's crazy. But it is, it is an incredible event. The things that you can see, the people that you can meet. I mean, going up to somebody like Thomas Pressure, having him open up his case, talk to you, show you how he built, you know, uh, a triple axis tourbillon, which basically every other watch uh, uh, manufacturer, master watchmaker said couldn't be made. And he made it. And it's a, you know, a $1.2 million watch. And he's like, yeah, here, try this on. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, Christophe Calais. Uh, What's just, it, what was on that triple tourbillon? What was the case size? It was probably small, right? Like 42, maybe. It probably looked like a peanut on your 40, 40, 40, 42. Well, the funny story out of the whole thing with um, uh, pressure, you have to understand, he's only like four foot five. I mean, he's <laughs> tiny. Um, very much Swiss German. And uh, speaks good English, but, you know, very heavy accent. And he was asking me about what I do, and we were talking about our customer base. And uh, the funny story that he tells is he sold a million-dollar tourbillon to this guy, uh, and the guy had had it for about a year. And he suddenly, one night at home, gets this frantic phone call. And I guess when you sell somebody a million-dollar watch, you give them your home phone number. Um, the guy's like, Thomas. You know, I'm going to this black tie affair. I pulled your watch out of the vault. I go to put it on, and the watch is broken. It's not running. Oh, my God, what do I do? I paid you a million. You know, and needless to, you know, it's like when you walk out to your Lamborghini and, you know, you turn the key over and you hear clunk. And uh, Thomas just says, well, perhaps if you try winding it. Hang on a minute. <laughs> oh, Thomas, you're a genius. Thank you. Oh, my God, you saved me. It's running perfectly. And... I'm just one of those people. I always figured if you're going to spend a million dollars on a watch, mm -hmm. you ought to know that it needs to be wound. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> I know. But well, at that point, it's just a status thing, I think. But, yeah. But um, this last, I didn't have a chance to even talk to you uh, really, you know, much. I, mean, I literally, when I called you, I had no idea you were just landed 
when you came yeah. back, you know, from uh, I mean, from literally, I had just turned my phone back on. I we just thought of it. Is you know, maybe, maybe you, you know, we talked about you doing a show. I thought, well, maybe he'll do it this week. And I called. And you said you just landed. You were st still on the plane, right? Yeah, we literally had just landed. We so, were taxing. Yeah. So I really haven't had a chance to talk to you much uh, about you know how it was down there in Florida. Anything interesting <coughs> happened down there this time, or the same old, the same old, or any stories? Um. No, it it was you know. Uh, One thing I'm curious about is you know you got you have you you've got Al you've got Jill. Uh, how do they determine you know who gets what hours? I mean, did you? I didn't get a chance to watch much this weekend. Were you doing? Well, you know, a lot two of in the morning, or were you doing ten o'clock? What were you? You know. Well, I was kind of spread out. I I I got there early and didn't have some shows. Uh, actually, went and played some poker because uh, there was a casino right around the corner. Uh, from the hotel we were staying at and I did a few hours and then all my remaining hours got pulled because Al was very sick so <clears throat> needless to say he wanted to do the shows uh, he was very excited about the event but he pulled my hours so that I could be there kind of like his understudy if his voice went out then I had to immediately step in so you were standing on the side yeah so anytime you saw him on the air I was standing there Plus, on, on some of those days, I had my own hours to do. So it made for an extra long day because as it was broken up where I had time to go, like, catch a nap or go get something to eat, yeah, that wasn't happening. Uh, so, and I got, I got an hour there at uh, uh, the, the finale, one of the three finale hours, which are always the really fun hours because, you know, you know how you guys are. You wait till the end uh, for the most part and then start making your purchases. So things get really crazy you know, the last year, which, you know, I mean, you know, it's like doing a yeah, today's top value. It's true. It's true. But I, yeah. I, I had to go in there last night and I had to uh, do a one thirty to two in the morning spot. And uh, I, you know, I had to take a look and I took a look and those last three hours, you guys like set a record or something. I mean, it was, they were three very good hours. Wow. It was amazing. I saw what you did. And uh, man, that's, of course, this time of year is the right time of year too. But we have but almost you, no shows through the end of the year. Yeah, but, you know, you need a break. My goodness gracious. Give it a rest, Yeah, Mike. no. I'm, <laughs> I'm just kind of sitting around going, I don't know what to do with myself. Well, I'll do chilling with Larry Megan. I hey. have nothing else to do. Okay, cool. Uh, well, listen, uh, I guess no one's calling in. I think we might have reached the end of the phone calls here. And anybody wants to talk to Mike? You know, what I do, Mike, I don't know if you've watched my show before, but you know, I love the old classic films, and I like the old uh, style of singers and, you know, the Sinatra and Nat King Cole and all that kind of stuff. And... Ella Fitzgerald, and of course, my favorite you saw above my fireplace, mm. right? You know, Judy Garland's my favorite. So, uh, what I do is I end every show, and um, I'm almost reluctant to end the show because I see we still have a lot of viewers on the line. I want to make sure everybody's got their questions into Mike. Going once, yeah, going once is last call. You know, uh, before we because once we go to the close, that's how we end the show. I end every show with one moment from Judy. You got to have a little Judy in every show. I mean, it's my show. Like, you know, if you had your show and you had one thing in every show, would it be like a poker thing or would it be a... No, I just thought of something and well, uh, thought better of it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mike. Keep it clean. This is a PG show. All right, PG-13. It would, it would involve a female. Oh, okay. In every show. All right. Yeah, you know, it's funny because actually on the Internet, you could probably get away with a lot more if you really wanted to. I mean, this is, it used to be like, well, it's cable, you know, but yeah. now, cable, you got to keep it clean. This is the Internet. So this isn't like HBO or something. This is way it. lower than HBO. I mean, you can. Well, I mean. But I like to keep Acorn TV. We're going to keep pretty clean. Okay. We're, we're going to self. That's why I self-censored. Uh, that's what I'm saying. We're going to self-police ourselves here. I don't need another YouTube clip. Yeah. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to, uh, it's that time of the night, and uh, we're going to close it out, and we're going to go to my segment. Always Chasing Rainbows. You know, uh, everybody knows by now, you know, I love Judy Garland. And, um, you know, I think last week we showed just a real quick clip of uh, Judy and Mickey Rooney. You can't really talk about Judy without t covering the Mickey Rooney years. We've covered Judy now in, in the movies. Uh, we've seen Judy in concert a couple weeks ago. We showed a clip of her 
uh, from her 1955 TV special where she did uh, Over the Rainbow. We, we've shown her from her TV show in the 60s. I've got another one from her TV show in the 60s, but here's another thing we haven't done yet. You can't really completely cover the Judy Garland span or life, lifespan without mentioning the fact of her daughter, Liza Minnelli. And, um, of course, Liza was born in 1946. Judy married uh, Vincent Minnelli. Uh, Vincent Minnelli was her producer in 1944 with um, Meet Me in St. Louis. And they got married about six months after that movie wrapped. And, you know, Judy was much younger than Vincent Minnelli. And Liza was born in 46. This is a clip from 1963 on Judy's TV show, The Judy Garland Show, on CBS. And here Liza is 17 years old. And... You'll see that she she actually towers over Judy, but Judy's wearing like four inch heels and uh, actually and Liza's wearing flats because Judy Judy's only four foot eleven. But um, there's a lot of clips out there of Judy and Liza. And one of the things I love about that is just, you know, that whole mother daughter, you know, love thing between them. And it's a short clip. It's a, you know, less than two minutes. But this is Judy and Liza Minnelli when Liza is only 17 years old in 1963 singing with her famous mother on her tv show and uh you know i thought i picked this song mike because you know it's called together and you and i've been together for a couple years now in a way so let's check it out here's judy garland and her daughter liza minnelli Well, there it is, another show here, Chilling with Larry Megan. Uh, great show tonight. I want to thank everybody out there for um, participating tonight. Definitely one of our biggest audiences we've had this season. Uh, next week, by the way, uh, on uh, Thursday night, my special guest is going to be Wing Liang from Android. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, that ought to be fun. And then here's a fl news flash: In two weeks on Wednesday night, we're going to move the show from Thursday to Wednesday my special guest is going to be Savvy Avi. It's going to be Avi Vieira oh. from Exoskeleton. She's coming in here, and we're going to have Avi on the show. Crash your server. <laughs> she might, and you know what? That's okay. But um, we're having a lot of fun with it. Uh, any last thoughts, Mike? No, thanks for letting me come in. It was great. Thanks for everybody uh, tuning in, watching, Skyping. And thank you for coming in, Mike. No, and I appreciate it. Awesome. This is fun. We'll do it again. Absolutely, we'll do it again. So uh, remember, everybody... Um, you know, never give up, you know, always pursue your dreams and goals. Always keep chasing those rainbows. Until next week, I'm Larry Megan. Peace, love, and all good things. <laughs>